Good day. Welcome to our PIP lesson in Physics for Engineers. And now, we're going to talk about the dynamics of rotation. So our learning objectives for this lesson is to determine the relationship of force and distance in computing torque. To solve problems involving rigid body in equilibrium. And determine the center of gravity of a rigid body. Our topic outline, torque, rigid body in equilibrium, and finally, center of gravity. Torque. A net force applied to a body gives that body acceleration. But what does it take to give a body an angular acceleration? That is, what does it take to start a stationary body rotating or to bring a spinning body to a stop. A force is required, but it must be applied in a way that gives a twisting or turning action. So in this lesson, we will define a new physical quantity, which is called torque, which describes the twisting or turning effort of a force will find that the net force acting on a rigid body determines the, its angular acceleration. In the same way, that net force on a body determines its linear acceleration. The mass of most rigid objects is spread out and not concentrated at a single point. These objects can move in a number of ways. So, in this figure or illustration, one possibility motion is what we call translation motion, in which all points on a body travel. Um, travel on parallel path. If you see here, the top point is moving parallel with the uh, lower point, the same with the middle point. So it's not necessarily a straight line. In pure translation, there is no rotation of any line in the body because translational motion can occur along a curved line. It is often called curvilinear motion or linear motion. Another possibility of a motion is rotational motion. Which may occur, this is rotational motion, which may occur together or at the same time with translation. So let's see what it looks like when a rotation and translation motion is being combined. Okay, so we're going to have a ruling motion. A net external force causes linear motion to change. But what causes rotational motion to change? For example, something causes the rotational velocity of a speedboat propeller to change when the boat accelerates. Is it, the, is it simply the net force? As it turned out, it is not the net external force, but rather the net external torque that causes the rotational velocity to change. Just as greater net forces causes greater linear acceleration, thus greater net torques causes greater rotational or angular acceleration. To help us visualize or explain the idea of torque, consider this figure. So when you push a door with a force F, as in, in this part A, the door opens more quickly or easily. So when the force is larger, it's more easy to open this door. 
other things being equal, a large force generates a larger torque. However, the door does not open as quickly if you apply the same force at the point closer to the hinge as portrayed in the part B. Because the force now produces less torque. Furthermore, if you push it directly nearly at the thing at the hinge as in part C or almost toward to the hinge, you will have a hard time opening the door at all because the torque is nearly zero on the point where the force is applied relative to the axis of rotation and on the direction of the force. You can try this at home. Try to open a door at the farthest point from the hinge and applying the same force, the same effort, at uh, nearly close to the hinge and try to apply the same force toward the hinge. Okay, for simplicity, we deal with a situation in which the force lies in a plane that is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So in this figure, for instance, the axis is perpendicular to the page or in the screen and the first line in the plane of the paper. So considering this figure, we are looking at the top view. So this drawing shows the line of action. So this is the line of action and lever arm of the force. So two concepts that are important in the definition of torque. The line of action is an extended line drawn collinear or along the force. The lever arm is a distance L between the line of action and the axis of rotation. By the way, the axis of rotation here is this hinge, which is perpendicular with the screen. So, measuring on a line that is perpendicular to the bottom. Okay, so these two components are very important in defining torque because the magnitude of torque is equal to the magnitude of force times the lever arm. And it's always important to take note that lever arm is always perpendicular with the line of action or with the force. So the unit, the standard unit for torque is Newton meter because we multiply the magnitude of the force with the magnitude of the, the length. So we have a unit of Newton meter. So here in part B, we can see that the force is inclined or have an, make an angle with the, with the door at a certain angle. So our lever arm is now here, making perpendicular or 90 degrees to the line of action. Same with here at part C, we can see that the line of action is crosses or passes through the axis of rotation. Therefore, our lever arm is zero. Okay, so let's consider this example problem. So consider the figure at the previous slide. This, this figure. So a force or magnitude 55 Newton is applied to a door, the first F. However, the lever arms are different in the three parts of the drawing. So part A is 0 0.08 meter. Part B, the lever arm is 0 0.60 meter and part C, the lever arm is zero meter. So find the torque in each cases. So using our formula, the magnitude of torque is equal to the, um, the magnitude of the force times the length of the lever arm, we have the solution. And by the way, the symbol for torque is tau. So this is the symbol for torque. And it, and it 
is also important to, to know that torque is a vector quantity. So the magnitude and the direction of the torque is important. However, when we looking for only the magnitude, so the sign is maybe um, not considered. Anyway, the, the using the convention of the angle, sign, uh, sign of the angle, where counterclockwise is positive and can, uh, sorry, the counterclockwise is positive direction and clockwise direction is negative direction for the angle. So same application in determining the direction of the trick. Okay, so the solution for letter A is this. We multiply 55 Newton with 0 0.8 meter. So we have 54, 44 Newton meter. And for B, multiplying the length of the lever arm, which is 0 0.6 with 55 Newton, we have 33 Newton meter. And finally, for, five, for letter C, multiplying C with the length, with the magnitude of the force, we have 0 Newton meter. Okay, so try to solve this problem. So in the figure shows, the ankle joint, this is the ankle joint, and the Achilles tendon, this is the Achilles tendon, attached to the heel at point B. So the tendon exert a force F. So in the figure B, it's a force F along the, this direction with the magnitude 720 Newton. Determine the torque the magnitude and direction of this force about the ankle joint, which is located 3.6 times 10 raised to negative 2 meter away from the point B, P. Okay? So this is the length between the ankle joint and the Achilles tendon. So we are looking for the torque that made by the force F. So this is the line of action and the lever arm is perpendicular with the line of action. So from, in, from the ankle joint, making perpendicular with the force. So this is the lever arm. So determine the value of the torque. So if you consider um, counterclockwise direction as your positive, therefore, your torque will be negative. But if you consider clockwise direction as your positive direction, so you're going to have torque of positive. So try to solve this problem and write your answer in the comment section.